the world of international touch football descended on Coffs Harbour in May as a host of old rivals took part in the 2015 Fit World Cup. The first World Cup was in 1988, uh, so this is our eighth instalment of the World Cup and it happens every four years, so it's basically our Olympics. So um, it's a big event and the one that every nation builds up to. It's very much a participation sport, so we have uh, an open entry category, so as long as a nation can put together teams, uh, they're more than welcome to come along, and I think uh, as you can hear in the background, it adds a lot of flavour and colour to the event. Touch footy is growing all over the world, accessible to children, mixed teams and age groupers, right up to those representing their country in the national squad. Every four years when you come to one of these World Cups, there's just a new nation attending. So it's, it's fantastic to see and certainly, you know, speaking different languages around the tents, it, it presents its challenges, uh, but it's just a wonderful event. We've got 90 teams at this event. Uh, but at the point of uh, expression of interest, we had 108 teams likely to attend. So uh, certainly we're hoping in the future that we'll have more and more teams uh, entering the World Cup. I think to have teams like China, Malaysia, Philippines here, you can expect that we're going to have uh, great growth into Asia and uh, you know maybe some more marriage proposals like we just saw on Field One from Hong Kong. Coffs Harbour has very much been one of the homes of our sport. Uh, it's a wonderful facility and we've got a great local relationship with the Coffs Harbour City Council. Certainly an idyllic part of New South Wales. I think it does have some wonderful things to offer and we can go to the beaches or get up into the mountains or, or actually get into some of the wonderful restaurants and cafes around town. But look, it's a wonderful facility. I think one of the best touch facilities that anyone would ever want to play at. It's a great sport to play, you know, everyone can play, you know, mums, dads, sons, daughters, even in the older age group as well. So I guess in rugby league, give it, give it the credit that it deserves in terms of the skill levels. The social aspect, you make, you make lifelong friends and um, you're just getting around people that you know that you don't see very often and one tournament can bring all that together. It's a nice fast game, it um, keeps you fit and you can um, mix between your families and your friends and um, you just meet a whole lot of people. Yeah, the games have been very tough. The teams have come a long way since last World Cup. It should have been sunny, but um, unfortunately it's been a bit wet. Conditions were, were certainly trying. Um, you know, it would have been nice to, to have some sunny, uh, sunny days, but certainly, you know, you've got to play the conditions. But the boys really enjoyed it. You know, it took us right back to when we were like eight, eight or nine years old, you know, you know having a bit of fun in, in, in the rain. The weather is the one thing we couldn't control after four years of planning. Uh, but we've certainly put together the best possible draw that we could given the conditions. So now entering the finals format we know that all the teams have actually had a hit out and the right two teams are hopefully playing in the grand finals. Touch football it sort of appeals to um, everyone, both sexes, all ages and I guess I've loved touch football um, ever since I've played it since I was 12 and have continued to play it. Basically all my friends I've met through touch, husband, um, even helps out with work and helped me in all areas of my life and that's why I enjoy it so much. So. Touch football it's, it's the only thing that really keeps me fit and um, I don't get out there and sort of do those extras and stuff like that. When Emily goes for runs, I guess I stay stay with the kids and uh, look after them. Yeah, so we've got two kids. Brooklyn, he's um, three and a half now. I was actually pregnant with him um, at the World Cup four years ago um, and was playing in the women's open team then. I think I was about eight weeks of pregnant with him. I had a goal in my head that I wanted to be back for this and just worked really hard to try and get there within a small space of time. We're playing, obviously the kids will be um, sort of growing up around it, so it's pretty hard to um, not get, in, get involved. So we might get them in that and then get them into maybe soccer and NRL. Brooklyn's only three now and he comes out to all our games with us and even social stuff um, down at the local park and throws the ball around already. And um, yeah, it's just good to see and hopefully that touch football will be one of his sports that he sort of excels in as well. So, and Mila, but yeah. <laughs> 
a lot of NRL players who have come from a touch football background. Um, I think they always w would say, you know, the basic skills of the game um, are the things that um, help them probably excel in rugby league itself. Um, not only that, but the social aspect as well, being able to talk to people, just that um, team environment, you know, like um, all the aspects that come out of that, it just builds yourself and your character. First off, let's wrap up the results from the seniors divisions competing at the Touch World Cup. In the women's 27s, it all came down to an Australia versus New Zealand final, with Australia taking the gold in a 6-1 victory. In the men's 30s, it was another dominant performance as Australia defeated the Cook Islands by nine touchdowns to one. In the men's 35s, it was a familiar final lineup as Australia met New Zealand but the Kiwis took the win by six touchdowns to five, breaking Australia's winning streak. But normal service was resumed in the men's 40s as Australia once again faced New Zealand, taking a close victory 7-6 in the drop-off. The men's 50s saw Italy facing Australia in the final, with the Aussies taking the goal, seven touchdowns to two. And for the fourth time in these finals, the senior mixed division saw Australia face New Zealand, with Australia taking the gold, 11 touchdowns to seven. Touch footy includes everyone. Greg Young is the oldest player in the tournament, but he is still able to represent his country at the highest level. Touch football is such a great sport because it can involve the whole family. Uh, my wife's played at uh, elite level as well. Um, my children are just starting to get involved with touch football now. And it's just a game you can go out, uh, club situations, go out with the whole family at night, uh, play mixed, you can play your open divisions as well. I often do that with uh, my wife and, that, and the kids come out, enjoy the night and they watch it from an early age and they say, yes, I want to have a crack at this as well. So then you get those opportunities to actually play with the children as well, which is great. I'm currently 57 at this point, um, so I'm fortunate to be still playing uh, in the Australian 50s team. We uh, just had our grand final, we played against Italy in the final. Italy uh, gave us a very hard game and we just knew that we had to uh, stick to our game pattern, our plays and uh, things would come good for us towards the end of the game, which they did. The sun and the crowds came out for the finals of the Open Division. First up was the popular Mixed Opens. A record 22 countries turned up to compete in this event. Papua New Guinea defeated England for the bronze medal, leaving Australia and New Zealand to battle the final. New Zealand off to a fiery start. Hunapur will look to put his mark on it. Look at that pass. What an outstanding start from New Zealand. And the pass was offloaded there to Benbo. It came from Trent Tuma. Benbo will dump it off and bring scoop up now through the centre. Tuma has gone right to left this time. Yes, indeed. Perfectly lovely step and swerve. Hunapur managed to link up with Jeremy Locke. And it was traffic both ways. So the Kiwis burrow low with Tiwi Davies. Australia all of a sudden try to hit back. And just over five minutes remaining, first half, acting half to win goal, brilliant! A close first half saw New Zealand ahead, four touchdowns to three. New Zealand going to attack, this is the last tackle. Oh, nice touch, a nice pass inside and no touch. Let's see if they've got a few uh, tricks to pull out Thompson and they go right, they may have come up with a touchdown, rolling. A hook by there was the a hook there. defense. There was some hooking, Andrew, where they try and keep the player out. A period of time for New Zealand saw the Aussies take advantage to square things up. And that's a sin bin, Andrew, and that's Connor Palmatato. And Australia will score straight away. Palmatato goes off. This seemed to break New Zealand's hearts as Australia stomped home with three more touchdowns, taking the win 8-5. to five. One more to put the icing on the cake. Yes, indeed. And now they sing, they dance, they hug. Words can't explain how I'm feeling right now. We knew that we fought, uh, kept in the fight, that we'd come out on top, and credit to our team. Like It was, we were down for a little while there, and we fought our way back in, and that just shows the character of the players we have in our team, to come out on top and you know, finish off so strong.
Touch footy is a growing sport and is seeing some of its biggest development in the women's game. So I started playing touch football when I was very young. Um, just played in the backyard with my brother and then played in his social team. My dad plays touch and it just developed from there into rep teams. So I turned 17 in October last year. I'm in the Australian Women's Opens team and I'm the youngest in that and I'm doing my HSC. Touch football is so good because it's so easy and like it's easy to start and it's so social. You get to meet people from all around Australia and even the world here. Women's touch football is good because there's minimal contact, like not many injuries and also it gets them involved and keep fit. Balancing school and touch is pretty hard but I've got a good school that helps me manage both and my family is very supportive. World Cup so far has been an amazing experience, playing all the countries who aren't so developed but helping them and giving them the experience just as well as us is so good. In the women's open division, which was contested by 14 international teams, it was the familiar green and gold meeting New Zealand in the final, while Singapore had beaten South Africa for the bronze. Weaving is Peter Rogerson, that'll be a touchdown. Camera takes you right behind the New Zealand defensive line. Australia seem to really fancy their chances left to right. And uh, Peter Welsh, and again they combine, and I think she's got over. The Queensland is coming to the fore in some of these big plays for Australia. There's another chance. The defence anticipated a pass going all the way out to the corner. As uh, Jessica McCall has got it away to Boss. The dominant first half saw the Australian women leading at half time. Four touchdowns to one. Now Hennessy, let's see what she can do. Over the top, over the top. They're going to call it OK, are they? They are. Can't find space. Still got it. Still may score, will score. You sort of sense there's more touchdowns coming from Australia. Winchester away. What it goes there again, is she? That's a magnificent trophy and they're going for it again. They've got it again. And Australia delighting coach Peter Bell as they claim gold in some style. Eight touchdowns to New Zealand's four. Yeah, I can't tell you how much it means um, to me and to the girls. Uh, we have worked hard for this one and we knew it was going to be tough against New Zealand. Um, and for the girls to come out and play the way they did, um, under some pressure, like, you know, I couldn't be proud of them. So, yeah, mean to all. New Zealand, they're um, obviously our biggest opponent and they're, uh, they've got a young side this year. A few of their main players from the last, the previous years are out and um, if we're not on our game, um, we can definitely uh, go down to these boys. The men's open title saw 16 international teams do battle for top honours. Papua New Guinea had defeated South Africa for the bronze medal leaving a grand final with two very familiar foes, Australia and New Zealand. And that is great. Australia on the board. Roberts always consistent, never had a bad game and uh, through Moylan and then Roberts again. Australia have got a second one. Wait till you see some of the passes. Hennessy is capable of throwing. It is sweet and that is sweet from Australia. Hennessy. New Zealand were under pressure and needed something special. Serious about getting his side back in the match, and it comes, that's a touchdown. Michael Kavanagh. Last one it is for Australia. There's a pass on, oh yes! Palau! He's got one again. Australia on the turnover. Look at this, you don't see it often. Cover defence coming from everywhere. That's not a touch, that's a push. With tensions high, Australia's Peter Norman reacts to the infringement. So he's been in the bin, he's been and put the in the bin. he's been overturned. Okay. As a result, so because of his reaction being over the top. But this didn't deter Australia's game, nor did it give New Zealand an advantage as they failed to score against this team of five. Here they go, away they go. And uh, sprinting down the side, it's a huge run for Dr. Prowse. And uh, look at the zest in attack, oh great play. There is another. With New Zealand only managing one touchdown, it was time for tactics and tough talk in the Kiwi camp. Here it is, the second half of the Men's Open final. It's the last 20 minutes 
of the 2015 World Cup. And Australia looking to start as they did the first half. That is extraordinary. Linking up there with Riley. Riley gets it over the top. He's opened them up. In the end, Australia surged to victory, beating New Zealand 11 touchdowns to two. As a Moylan passes, they will get to 11. That will do Australia just too good. And the MVP is Peter Norman. So well done to Australia. That's eight consecutive World Cups in men's open touch. For the four tries or something I got, all I did was put it down. They did all the hard work for me. So any, any accolades that come my way, I owe my team. So yeah, very honoured, but. The Aussie men capping off a dominant display as hosts. And Australia lighting up the skies with gold in eight out of nine divisions here at the World Cup. We'll see you in four years' time in Malaysia.